For today's grim adventure, we find ourselves in Holy Cross Cemetery in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Today we're going to be visiting the final resting place of one of America's very first serial killers, a man by the name of H.H. H. Holmes. Now we already know that H.H. H. Holmes is buried in section 15, but there are two landmarks that we're looking for, and they're pretty big. So if you know where section 15 is, you can find them almost immediately. The first landmark that we're looking for is this giant cross with a woman hanging from it for Juliana, which means H.H. H. Holmes should be somewhere directly behind me. And then the other landmark, as I thought, is this one here. It's the half tree. For some reason, it's cut in half, which would put H.H. H. Holmes right over here. In fact, I can see the mark in the grass. He actually has two plots here in section 15. The final resting place of H.H. H. Holmes is right there. Also new this morning, the body of a suspected 19th century serial killer who was born here in New Hampshire is being exhumed in Pennsylvania. The great grandchildren of Henry Mudgett, also known as H.H. H. Holmes, hoped that identifying his remains will quell rumors that he conned his way out of execution. When they asked to exhume H.H. H. Holmes' body, the judge granted permission under one condition. No matter who the identity of the remains was that they found, the remains had to go back in the same grave where they dug it up from, which is why we have this discoloration in the grass. He didn't want his body to be dug up by grave robbers or people digging him up and donating his body to science, so he asked to have his coffin with him in it filled with concrete and then to have the coffin itself encased in concrete and then instead of six feet down he wanted to be buried 10 feet down making it extra harder for people to get him out it's another reason why most people think hmm maybe he really wasn't there maybe he did fake his his death or he paid somebody off and he skipped town but it's him that's H.H. H. Holmes. It was very fascinating reading over the documents and articles about the exhumation process. There was so much time and research that went into it that even along the way, they discovered that at some point he had tuberculosis, which is highly contagious, even in death, apparently. And that really delayed the process of having him discovered or even confirming that he was here. And... Uh, because they ran over the time expected, they came dangerously close to being here on Mother's Day. And the cemetery was like, if you could please not be present during Mother's Day because it's a very busy time for visitors. A baby goal. Don't look now, but there are these geese coming for us. Now, you said something a little cute. bit ago yeah. that got me thinking. Mm -hmm. So cemetery records show that H.H. H. Holmes is buried in grave three and four. There's two graves here. Mm -hmm. And when they exhumed his, the remains and trying to find out you know, if he was here, tell us, tell the, tell the viewers what they found. At first, they didn't find anything. Even the records here were kind of sparse. It did say that he was buried at 10 feet instead of six, and that there was concrete present. At the time back then, that wasn't customary. It is today to be encased in a concrete structure with your coffin. It keeps it from decaying and getting into the earth. Back then, they just plopped you into the ground. So upon digging, they did come across concrete, which was hopeful until they discovered an empty coffin. Now don't be concerned. They kept going and they discovered a second coffin with a second concrete encasement. So the rumors were true. His, what he wished yeah. in his time of death. His wishes were upheld. We're not sure by who, possibly just the cemetery. Even before they got this far to his burial spot, they weren't 
afraid, but highly concerned that because of his antics and comparing himself to Sherlock Holmes, they were thinking that even in his death, he may have set some kind of a booby trap oh, for wow. anyone trying to access his remains. So when they came across an empty coffin, they stopped production for a while and then continued on after drilling some holes into the empty coffin and inserting things like scopes. And uh, it's another process that has to do with sound. I, sorry, I can't recall the name until they saw, yeah, there is something down there. So it was almost like any archeological dead. They, they take their time, they're very respectful. And before just continuing on bullishly, they do it gently to preserve what's down there. And in doing so, they were able to recover his remains intact. Even though I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I've been to Philadelphia many times, I've never came out here to this cemetery to visit H.H. H. Holmes. Again, not glorifying it, but just walking history. When H.H. H. Holmes decided to leave Chicago in his murder castle that he built and killed people during the World's Fair in Chicago, he ended up here in Philadelphia, where he met up with a business partner, a man by the name of Benjamin Peitzel. And they had an office right here on the street that I'm standing, on a street known as Callow Hill. The address was 1316 Callow Hill Street. The story goes that pretty much the only reason why they went into business is they were going to basically do an insurance scam. The plan was this. They were going to fake Benjamin Peitzel's death and they were going to take the insurance money and they were going to split it amongst the two men. Which basically, it was like $10,000 back then and split it between Benjamin Peitzel and H.H. H. Holmes. Now, of course, H.H. H. Holmes being the serial killer that he is, he wanted something more. So instead of faking Peitzel's death, he actually killed him. He set him on fire and he staged it to look like an accident. He took the insurance money and believe it or not, took Peitzel's three children on vacation to Boston. Eventually the insurance company and the authorities got smart and they figured out what happened and they realized that it wasn't an accident. In fact, it was murder. And when they finally caught up with H.H. Holmes, they found him alone up in Boston. No kids around, nothing. Only to find out that not only did he kill Peitzel, but he killed all three kids as well. Got arrested, brought back down here from Boston to Philadelphia, and he died in prison. Well, he was executed. What you're looking at right now is a CVS pharmacy. And a little further down the street, you see that church? Well, there was a photo taken back, I think it was like the late 1950s, here in Philadelphia of a, of a prison known as Moy Amensing Prison. It's no longer here, but that CVS pharmacy, back in the day, it used to be an Acme grocery store. The prison was torn down a long time ago, but it used to stand right where this parking lot now is. And then that Acme that was across the street back in the 50s, then that old photo, when they tore down the prison, they took advantage of the situation, they moved over here, built a new building, and it's still here today. I'm not gonna read the whole plaque, but I do wanna draw your attention to two things. The first one being, at the very top, it says Moya Mensing Prison. And about halfway down, it says H.H. H. Holmes, considered America's first serial killer, was executed here. Crazy, right? Right now, I'm standing on the back side of the Acme grocery store. And the only thing that remains from the old prison is part of the foundation, the wall. And it's back here in this corner. In fact, what you're looking at right now, down here on the right-hand side, you can see it's topped with some concrete. This wall is all part of the original prison. Pretty wild, right? Piece of history that people walk by every single day. 
And most of them probably don't even know. In fact, standing here at the corner, looking up both sidewalks, you can clearly see that it's the same wall. I love whenever history remains. One last thing before you go. I read another article that I found kind of interesting about what they found opening H.H. H. Holmes' burial grave. Instantly, in the second coffin, written in black wax pencil, was both of his names, Mudgett and H.H. H. Holmes. On his body laid an iron cross with his death date and H.H. H. Holmes. But the one I thought was kind of comical, but also fascinating, is his mustache was intact that you see in all the pictures. It was an intact, and the second it hit the air, it started to disintegrate. And that kind of felt like a very Indiana Jones moment. Just a few little details I forgot to mention. When it comes to H.H. H. Holmes, this isn't the first video we've done on the man. In fact, whenever we were in Chicago, we went to where the murder castle once stood, which is now a post office. If you want to watch that video, the link is in the description below. And with that being said, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come from my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's all.